Hello everyone, if you're watching this video, you really should have watched my videos on major and minor skills. So, when most people think of music, they often think about a tune they can hum or some melodies they heard from a song. But what many people don't realize is that these melodies and tunes are a very small part of music. What you don't hear quite obviously is the harmonic support under these melodies. The most simple example is when you see a guitarist striking a big chord. And those chords create harmony that supports the singing melody. You can see the melody as the horizontal aspect of music and the harmony as the vertical support of the music. And all of these chords and harmony begin with one single concept, intervals. Interval is the distance between two notes. For example, here I have an E and here I have a B. If I put these two notes on a keyboard and count the distance between them, I can conclude that the distance between E and B is 7 semitones, which means that the interval between these two notes is 7 semitones. Now, if these two notes do not happen at the same time, we call that a melodic interval or linear interval. And if they do happen at the same time, we call them harmonic interval or vertical interval. But we will be most dealing with vertical intervals. There are two main types of intervals, simple and compound. Simple intervals means that the two notes are within the octave. Here are some examples of simple intervals. As you can see, the top note is always within an octave. Compound intervals, on the contrary, are two notes that are further apart than an octave. So here are some compound intervals. And as you can see, the top notes are beyond an octave. So of course we can compute all intervals through semitones, but later on when we're building triads and chords and getting to deeper music theory stuff, calculating intervals through semitones will simply not work. That is why we must learn how to measure intervals through size. An interval size is comprised of two factors, a generic size and a specific size. A generic size is the easier one to find. It means the number of slots on the staff line which the interval spans. For example, here I have E and A. To find its generic size, all we need to do is count the number of slots this interval spans on the staff line. So counting from E, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 slots. So the generic size from E to A is 4. Now, generic size are not affected by any accidentals. This means that even if I add some crazy accidentals here and there, the generic size is still 4. In fact, you don't even need a clef to know the generic size. Let's say I change the treble clef to something you have never seen before. The generic size would still be 4. Let's do another example. What is the generic size of these two notes? Again, we don't care about the accidentals. Just count from this note the number of slots it spans on the staff line. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And the generic size of this interval is 6. Unfortunately, generic size is only the beginning of learning intervals. The more difficult aspect is the specific size. We have classified these specific sizes into different families. They are major intervals minor intervals, perfect intervals, augmented intervals, and diminished intervals. Each family has their own characteristic and properties. For example, the perfect family has a very hollow and unison sound to it. So over the next few videos, we're going to dig in and master all of these families so that we can continue learning deeper music theory.